Noah Chayt Laws. Nudzano and Beis, surprisingly, we're actually at the top of the page. Ashkach Rav Yaakov Bar Acha. Rav Yaakov Bar Acha found, what Ashkach means it found, the Avaksim the Sefer Agadita de Beirav. He found that it's written in a Sefer Agadita of the Beirav, of the Yeshiva of Rav. The same Yeshiva we mentioned yesterday, apparently they, at that stage, they already had written stuff. Yeah, this is already after the Mishnah. And they had Sfarim written, and there was a Sefer written by the people in that yeshiva. And what did it say over there? It said about Ben Noyach, Ben Noyach Nerag Bedayan Echad. A Ben Noyach can be judged and tried and uh, executed even with a base din of one person, as opposed to 23 Dayanim that we have to have in order to execute a person. But Ben Noyach, it's always much harsher, and he gets, soon we'll see why. He gets to be judged by one Dayan only. The da- that Dayan can be a guy as well, by the way, so it sounds like from the Rambam. Also, the testimony of one aid, one witness is enough, you don't need two. Without a warning, all of Bnei Noyach are supposed to know the halacha, and even without a warning, we are already judge them for what they do. There is one common denominator between their mishpat and our mishpat, and that is it has to be by a man and not a woman, which means the both the yonim and edim have to be male and not female. Yeah, soon we'll see why. And even a koiv, even a relative, can also be an a very interesting Rambam. I saw yesterday the Rambam says the Rambam is the one who actually brings down all these things alochulamaisa. And the Rambam says that the Shevel Mitzvah is Benay Noyach, we said yesterday, if a Benoyach doesn't keep them, he may get executed. So what does it mean one of those mitzvahs is dinim, right? What does it mean that yet yeah, to actually have the law done? So says the Rambam, if one Benoyach sees another Benoyach breaking the law and he's not reporting it, he's not making sure that judgment being, uh, uh, is being done, and on that he gets killed. Meaning that the halacha called dinim, one of the seven halachas called dinim, judgment means that the ben noach actually has to make sure that din is being done. Excuse the pun. Yeah, and that is otherwise that but that is of itself is otherwise carries oynish misa. So the and the and the and the the avira are both killed. The aid, the potential aid. Because somebody has to see the dinim, not to give the dinim go to the. Yeah, good point. In other words, Ellen is saying, yeah, therefore, if right, therefore, if one, if Tim sees uh, Jim doing something wrong, he sees Jim, uh, I don't know, killing, somebody else saw Jim killing and saw Tim ignoring it, being like a quiet accomplice, yeah? So that Lukhar would be the case. So then both Tim and Jim would have to be executed. One for killing and one for uh, being a silent uh, accomplice, yeah? Silent partner. Or a judge that doesn't do the right judgment, he ignores and he whatever gets bribed, let's say, and he ignores the fact that somebody killed or somebody stole. And if not, the question from Ashkov, one of you, if that's the right word. Um, Another question? Yeah. Why is such a leniency for a guy as opposed to, like, you know, yeah, you can have a car off, you can have a you can have all sorts of leniencies that you don't have to give. Yeah, that the, the guy. Okay, that enchinami. We can discuss it at the end of this year. It's a good, good point. It's not leniency. It's actually a stringency towards the guy. Yeah, well, actually, <laughs> in, at the end of the day, it's a stringency because the guy can get executed much easier. Also, bear in mind they only have seven mitzvahs and now six thousand and thirteen, so the number is very low, right? <laughs> Low, low in quantity and high in quantity, low in qual- quantity and high quality, I would call it, yeah? Also the assumption is that Goim, uh, okay, there's there's more to it, you know, it would give us some good uh, material to talk about to the end of this year. If I don't say it, you remind me, okay? Rabbi Shmuel, Mishum Rabbi Shmuel Amu, on behalf of Rabbi Shmuel, one of the Tanoim, they said, Afala Uborin. Uborin means Ubar is an embryo, or fetus, it's an unborn baby. So a big debate about uh, yeah about abortions and stuff. So if a yid killed an ubar, an unborn baby, so that's not good and it's prohibited, but it doesn't get misa. Yeah, if a gynecologist does uh, an abortion, so then although that's very wrong uh, on many levels, but it's for a yid that's not considered as mamish retzicha. 
it's one of the misnomers, you know, there's a lot of differences between the Torah and what people talk in the uh, room street, yeah? People will tell you to kill a baby is mamish l'kritzicha, so although it's wrong, it's not mamish killing because if a person killed an unborn baby, even with Edim and Asra, and he's Jewish, then he doesn't get executed. It doesn't carry with it in when it's missing. Yeah, it's not as bad as killing an actual live person. Which gates me to a whole debate. Um, so then, yeah, that makes sense. It's a Torah, so it makes sense. No, yeah, no, no. On the other hand, if a guy does it, says Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel is of an opinion that if a guy makes an abortion, then Al Ha'ubarin, he does get killed. Yeah, and we'll see later on why. It's all from, from Psukim. Yeah? If the guy is the one who, create, who, did, who did the abortion, who killed the unborn baby, then we treat the guy again in a harsher way, and he does get executed. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Struck a pregnant woman and they killed the fetus. So today they have more sophisticated ways. <coughs> it's the same idea, of course. The idea is to kill an unborn baby. Jewish and or not Jewish? Even not Jewish. Even not Jewish. Even not Jewish. A non Jew killed another non Jew is Chad Misa. Even if the non Jew is an unborn baby, still is Chad Misa. Maybe that's the idea that maybe the Catholics somehow got it. Uh, <laughs> Through the back door, that they're very machmir, you know, the Catholic more machmir than Jews about abortion. Maybe they sort of got it some, you never know. Maybe they sort of, you know, got the rebound from us. Minani Mili. The question is, how do you know all that? So, all this interesting information, and as Moshe was saying, we're being very stricter with the going, what's the source for all that? Amar Vyuda, the Omar Ko, I highly recommend you read the entire post. I don't want to involve the whiteboard here, but there's one. The longish pasuk that we're going to analyze, and most of the Gemaras today have like the whole pasuk on the side. Yeah, look at the uh, the side; you see the entire pasuk. The pasuk says, "Ach, the ach es dimchem lenatshoseichem edosh." I will, uh, I will edosh. I will not avenge. I will require. I will ask your blood back. Miad kol chaya adreshenu. I will ask it from every living being. How do they translate adreshenu? I will. Uh, exact, exact the blood. Exact. Uh, exact. I'll exact it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Miad the adam and from the hand of the person. This post seems to be a lot of redundant words, and that's why I have a lot of droshes. Miad ish ochiv edosh es nefesh adam. I will exact the the nefesh adam, the soul of the person, from one person to his brother. Okay, so this pasuk basically talks in many different ways about a person who kills his friend, and I will exact his blood from the from of, of the murdered one from the murderer. So what is this pasuk? How do we analyze the pasuk? It says ach is damchem shosechem ed roish ach. The word ach always means something to. So, usually to exclude, but sometimes to include, actually. Yeah, like by Sim Chavisa, Ach Samech, Lera Bois, very good. Afilu Bedayan Echod. The word Ach here comes to, again, Shalas, if you look at it, leniency or stringency, as you were saying, but it comes to include one Dayan only, or exclude the other Dayan, which means we don't need 23 Dayanim, give me a minute, not 23 Dayanim, but one Dayan is enough. Yeah, if Tim McKenzie killed or did anything else, of course, yeah, uh, then. One dayan is enough to deal with him because it says ach. Ach, only one is enough. That's ach haf, not ach his brother. That's a different word, yeah? Yes, question time. Uh, yes, uh, ach ach sameach, yes. it's also to exclude. Why? Uh, exclude the atzvot, very good. <laughs> you include one thing, you exclude the other. Miyad kol chaya. Now, chaya doesn't mean an animal here. Miyad kol chaya says Rashi, miyad kol dover chay. Yeah, from any living being also comes to include more. Any living being, what does that mean? Afilu shaloi behasro. As long as a person was alive, yeah, then, and he killed, he did something wrong, such as killing, then even without a warning, he gets killed. He gets executed, you were alive, you did it, that's it, we're being stricter with you. Edreshenu umiyad ha'odom, we read the post now, I shall exact him, and miyad ha'odom, what's ha'odom? One person. I'll exact his blood from one person, that is to say, but Rosha Afilobeid Echod. Even one aid, even though there was only one witness and not two, as long as the witness was male, then that is enough. Miyad Ish continues the Pasuk, Miyad Ish from the hand of a man, Velo Miyad Isha. Miyad Ish, Velo Miyad Isha, that is to say that female, yeah, that a non Jewish woman or even a Jewish woman cannot be an aid, and she cannot be an aid. For the, for the for his case, ish below isha. 
Now, since she cannot be an aid, therefore she cannot be a dying either, because that's the rule. Yeah, that's a song in the, in the, in the Forshim. A person who cannot be an aide, cannot be a, a witness, cannot be a dying either. I mean, truth in halacha, women can be like a judge with Tzad being a borer, an arbitrator. A woman can be an arbitrator. Actually, today there's a Haredi woman, she's an arbitrator. Yes, yeah, she's very successful. In the, in, in, in the U.S. Uh, yeah. That's not so simple. That's okay. Since we're in line, I'm a little bit. Uh, not so much full of freedom of speech, it's not supposed to. First of all, to be a judge in a Goetia court, whether you're male, female, or anything in between, but I was saying to be a judge in a Goetia court, or even Chiloni court, is a very, very questionable thing, logically. No, the Kiddush Hashem does mean that the Goim applaud to you. It's not Kiddush Hashem. People who go to uh, all these uh, shows, and there's a from guy, and he sings very nicely, and the Chilonim are impressed. If it causes feelings of Avos uh, Hashem by them, yes. Not every time that Goyim or Chilonim applaud to somebody who's from, but the act itself is not considered as a toy Rodika act, it's not necessarily you know, Kiddush Hashem. So a person who actually, even to be a lawyer is a Shiloh, although it's really common to be a lawyer, but from people, because there's no other choice, and people need your help, etc., etc. But to be a judge means what? If you really, your head is completely, your mindset is completely into the Goy Shalom. And you're not even allowed to sue your friend to a non-Jewish court or, or non from court. That's an Isra de Arisa, unless you have no other choice. Yeah, it's Mavish Oser, it's a very severe Easter. people don't know. People, through people tell each other, I'm going to take you to court, to the irreligious court, is not simple at all, unless there's no choice, such as by the city hall, that you can't take them to base them. But other than that, it's not simple at all. So to be a judge in that system, is not simple at all, because your entire mindset is into the Goyish set of rules, which is different to the Torah set of rules. And that is not recommendable. They forget about men, women, or anything. That's not even the issue. Women is another shadow. Whatever. That's okay. Back to the Gemara. Afilu Isha, Achiv, it says, I'll avenge his blood or exact his blood from his brother. Afilu Koloi. What's Afilu Koloi? Even if he's related, his brother, even if his brother saw him killing, let's say, yeah, Tim McKenzie was seen by who? By uh, Jim McKenzie. And he saw that his brother killed. He can go and testify to the court, okay, and be a and be an aid for him. Mishuma Bishmuel Amu. Now we're continuing to quote to cite the Brisa. Rabbi Shmuel added one more chumra on the goyim. Mishuma Bishmuel Amu. Afala uborin. Even an unborn baby. Yeah, if a guy killed him, then he's high of Misa. Yes, yeah, so all the Goyish uh, gynecologists should better stop. My time of Bishmuel. What's the reason for Rabbi Shmuel? What's the source for Rabbi Shmuel's strict opinion? Dechtiv, because it says in a similar pasuk, actually the, the pasuk that ensues, the pasuk we just read, it says, Shofech dam ha'odom, be'odom dom We quoted that pasuk before. A person who spills his, his blood's friend, his own blood shall be spilled. But he's reading it with a twist, with a drosha, Shofech dam ha'odom, be'odom dom Get it? Somebody who spills the blood of a person who's be'odom, physically, inside another odom, dom ha'ishofeh. Ezo odom shu be'odom, which person lives inside another person, sounds like a nice joke, sounds like a nice joke riddle you can tell you are four years old, which person lives inside another person? That's the embryo, that's the fetus. Yeah, the uber, that kid, that unborn child, that is ha'odom. Ba'odam, and if you kill him, literally, and you are a guy, then you get Misa. And that is by, um, by Goy, because this Pasuk only talks about Bnei Noyach. This is a Pasuk that Hashem told Noyach when he left the Ark. The Tanakama, now Tanakama is not of that opinion, right? Tanakama is not that strict to that one, right? Only Tanakh the Verbi Shmuel said that if you kill if you go and kill an unborn baby, that's a story is Chayav Misa, but Tanakama didn't share that opinion. So how would Tanakama interpret the Pasuk? What would Tanakama do with the source of Rabbi Shmuel? Tanakama Devei Menashe, who the Omar, Kol Misa Hamur al Noach, Eino Ela Chenek. He would tell you, you know, I'm reading this Pasuk completely differently, and I'm saying I am of the opinion of Tanakama Devei Menashe, a different opinion, which we'll see later on. They believe that the Misa of Bnei Noach is not by sword, as we always thought. According to them, it's by chenet, by strangulation. The Shadi Lei Hai Be'odom, they take the word Be'odom and they throw it 
they connected a Seifei Dekro, they connect the word Shefer Dam Ha'odom, Choma, and then Ba'odom, they learn it in a different way, but the end of the Pasuk, V'dorosh Be'hachi, they learn it this way, Ba'odom Domei Shofer. In other words, Shefer Dam Ha'odom, the one who killed his friend, you know how you kill him? We put the comma there, and we read, Ba'odom Domei Shofer. You should spill his blood while his blood remains inside his body. What kind of shfichus doming do you have that the blood remains inside the body and doesn't spill out? One minute. Must be this is strangulation. Basically, strangulation is when the blood remains inside. Meaning, when we compare strangulation to sword, but the sword, the blood is spilled out, the strangulation, the blood stays inside, and yet, uh, obviously, the circulation of the blood stops. And therefore, they say something completely different. You are learning the Pasuk, Shoifech Dam Ha'odom Ba'odom. You connect the word Ba'odom to the first Odom. Odom Ba'odom is what? Little baby inside mommy. I'm saying no. I'm saying Shoifech Dam Ha'odom, Chama, Ba'odom Dam Ha'odom you know how you should spill his blood? While the blood is ba'odom inside of him, meaning strangulated. That's the halacha according to them. Therefore, they say the unborn baby, if the guy did anything to him, then in the heaven it's okay. No, no, he of Misa. It's just like a Jew. A shame can, if um, maybe it's even allowed, I don't know, actually, I don't think so, but maybe. But the other opinion says no, it's not talking about a pregnant woman, it's talking about Dam Ha'odom Be'odom that the type of Misa gets is tribulation. Yes, Baruch has a question. When we were talking... When our phones we were, are silent, right? Yeah. When we were looking before uh, for a source for Chemek in the Torah, how can we... Bring no, that's source? for a God, that's for a Jew. Beforehand we looked for a source for Chemek for Eden, and then an Echnami Chemek is not mentioned, but that's for Jews. Jews and God were two different stories. And uh, how do you say? The twain shall never meet. Anyway, now soon we'll see very interesting juxtapositions between God and Jews, comparisons about the punishment. Macy for Vimnuna. Now Vimnuna, now we're going to focus on women, non Jewish women, and their halachas. Is it different to the non Jewish men or not? Well, the Moscones, it's not, but we'll have to explore that. Mesin Rav Himnuna. Rav Himnuna is asking now a question from the Pothu. The Isha Loi Mifkeda. The Isha Loi Mifkeda, which means, are you telling me that a woman who saw a man killing, she is not another man. She witnessed murder. She can report it, but she doesn't have, she cannot be an aide, cannot be an Eda. She cannot be a witness, and therefore, consequently, she cannot be a judge, right? So, Yishalom Ifkina, that's what you're saying. You're saying that a woman, and also that means she's off the hook, in a way it's good for her, right? If a Goyish man sees something going on, according to the Rabbah, he has a very strong, strict heel to report, to make sure the judgment is being done. A woman says, I'm out of the story, and that Torah supports her, the women don't have to be involved in the judicial system of the Goyim themselves. That's what you're telling me. Okay, but I have a problem. Because it says by Avram Avinu, this is very surprising for us, because we always say Avram Avinu, and we're right, he was the first Jew, he was our father, right? But nevertheless, halachically, the... the I'm preempting the questions which is, that may be coming. Avram is talking. Oh, Avram, oh, I've heard Avram came from Terach, and it's true that at the end of his life he did bris mila. Now, halachically, Avram Avinu and it's and Yaakov and the Shvatim were bnei Noach. As we spoke, we spoke about before, I think I answered your question. Then they were mekayim the mitzvahs out of their own voluntary will. They, they sort of knew they had the gut feeling, actually, that kidney feeling. I'm not joking. The 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 major says Avram Avinu had the two kidneys taught him Torah. Kidneys are the place of where the moose and the consciousness is in, in, in the Shkofa. So from it's looking at they just knew that the right thing for them to do is to actually be Mekai the Mitzvahs and, and do it the right thing. And they really were Mekai all 613 and some say even with the Rabbonim. However, with the Arisa, what they had to do was Bnei Noach. And that's why sometimes when they felt it was right, says the Ramban, Yaakov could marry two sisters, the Shvati married the sisters, because they know right now this is the right thing for me to do because in the Olam Salyonim, that's Ashpo, as we spoke about before Pesach. But in any event, Avram is talking Yaakov with a cold halachic law, so to speak, but the letter of the law, Avram Avin was Ben Noyach, right? And therefore, if Hashem is commanding him certain things, 
Yeah, that could apply to Bnei Noach. Let's see. Except for Bris Mila, let's say Bris Mila is clearly not, and also Bris Mila repeats itself later, look at this with Parsha. But conceptually, Avram Avinu is a Bnei Noach. So now the Pasuk, now he comes with a question, Rav Imnuna. That, see, it says in the Pasuk about Avram Avinu, Hashem gives a big, uh, so to speak, a superficial compliment. Hashem is praising Avram Avinu. And the Pasuk says, I know Avram Avinu will command its bonov this beisoy achrov. Avram Avinu will command his bonov, his children, the es beisoy achrov, his household after him. The shamu derech Hashem lasses tzdoka umishpat. I know Avram Avinu will command all of humanity, especially Avram Avinu, not only Ben Noach, Avram Avinu was mashpia, was influential over many going, right? And I know he'll tell his children, Bonov, who also is Beisoy. Bonov are male, Beisoy, the house, is a woman. Yeah, which means a woman, yeah, women many times are called the household as a compliment for them, but they are the Iker Abais, Iker Aker Abais. So based on, you know, one of the Maroim said, I never called my wife, my wife called her my house, my household, my home, home is a better word, she is the home, yeah? And therefore, it says later, the Shomru Derech Hashem Lasset Tzedakah Umishpat. It says both boys and girls, what will they do? They'll do Tzedakah Umishpat, charity, Umishpat, justice, no? So it says both men and women will carry out the tzedakah and the mishpat. Mishpat is justice. But also it's it says. It also says Beisoy. It says boys and girls that will follow him, his descendants, both male and female, will follow his way and will do tzedakah or mishpat. Mishpat, big red blinking lines. Mishpat is judgment. So therefore you should have female judges, etc., even if there are no Noah. Yeah? So that's a question. And so the Gemara, you have to know how to read the Pasuk. Again, you have to know how to dissect the Pasuk. No, it's on the side. Again, I, I, I'm reading the entire Pasuk here, assuming you guys, most of the Gemaras today, maybe except for yours, Yosef, they have the entire Pasuk here. You, you see, a Pasuk is quoted with like three, four words, then you see the letter, and then you go here. It's very, I'm sure yours has it. Yeah, yeah. On the side, on the side of the page. On the side of the page of the entire Pasuk quoted. Okay, we'll give bring you uh, we'll, Ah, your more is older. Your more is older. Your more is older. The newer editions have the whole thing written. Okay, so take it from me. <laughs> That's what the Pasuk says. Okay, so now, who moisif la, who mefarek la? This is what he's asking the question. Who mefarek? Lefarek in modern Hebrew means to, uh, to separate, to dismantle, but mefarek, oh, he means to answer. He's untangling. Untangling the, yeah, the mess. Bonov Ladin. They say let's dock each one to its own separation. Bonov Ladin. His male children, descendants, Ladin, they'll do justice. And they say let's dock it's dock is more mercy, it's dock a charity. That's the women. The women can have a huge charity organization with millions of people, and the CEO can be a woman. Very nice, no problem with that. But the male children, we separate the pasuk to two, and we say the male should do the tzedakah, and the women, the, the sorry, the mishpat, sorry, and the female should do the tzedakah. But female with the, the mishpat, that's not the place for, for the woman to be the judge. I would ask. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Question by Moshe. Yeah. When we first started learning the Sanhedrin, we spoke about the whole concept of having more judges that they they only ever gave a death sentence. Right. And you would think that a woman has more of a rachamim, the more charitable side to it. Maybe her. too much. Maybe a woman has too much rachamim. It's not the, okay. Listen, uh, the Ashkafic law where women should not be a judge is, uh, is, is a different issue of itself. But sometimes for a woman to be a judge, it changes her teva. She becomes less uh, rachamim in, in practice. In practice, women judges, as far as I know, they're not more rough. And sometimes they want to show that they're tougher. And, uh, mm. I used to give shear in jail, and uh, they told me a lot of female judges that are actually stricter. Yeah, so they, they want to show that I'm not a woman with my own uh, uh, natural mercy feelings. I'm a judge. Don't think I'm uh, you know, like an overish person has to show that he's rich more than the regular rich guy. <laughs> You shouldn't remember I was ever poor before. I have to show I'm rich. So she has to show she's the toughie. She's uh, Margaret Thatcher number two. Not, uh, and, the, and this group is a step up. Who knows who's going to listen to me online? Yeah. And this group is a step up or step down from the jail? Overlay Rav Avia. Okay. Continues the story with the women, yeah? Women's issues. Amal Rav Avia Saba Rav Papa. Rav Avia the elderly, Rav Saba, Rav Avia the old, the, the elder, asked Rav Papa. Eima bas noach shehorgo, 
loy to holik, yeah, maybe a woman, a Goisha woman who killed, should not be killed. Maybe judgment should not be done to her. And have a woman murderer, yeah, she can do a right, left, and center, do what she wants. And maybe she won't get killed. Psh, why? Why would we come up, come up with such an idea? Because it says, Miyad Ish, below Miyad Isha, right? Just like you say, Miyad Ish. And you thought this possibly means miad ish, excluding a woman, uh, a female aide. Maybe miad ish is talking actually about the murder. We can interpret the pasuk as yeah, miad or the miad ish achiv etroish. Yeah, meaning if the man was the murderer, then I'll exact his blood. Yeah, but maybe otherwise no. Maybe if a woman kills the no, and see Omer he told him no, no, no. Achi Omer of Yuda. Since the next part of the Pasuk said, the word Adam is whoever whoever is Shoifech, the one who spills the blood of a person, should be avenged. Who's the one? Could be he or she. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't give you actually, a, a, doesn't give you a name of a person or any indication if it's male or female. Shoifech, the one who spills, it's a verb. Shoifech, not even the one, in Hebrew it works. Shoifech da ma'adam, it's just a verb. Shoifech, he, he or she who spills the blood, then so and so should happen. And since the Pasuk, we call Malkoim, therefore we call Malkoim has to include everybody, both male and female, they don't get away with murder, literally. Continues the Pasuk with another question. Maybe one would say that a Bas Noyach that had relations, she had adulterous, yes, she committed adultery, maybe she shouldn't be killed. Why? Excuse me. It says by Odom Arishon, and it's one of the Psukim later on we'll see, we'll learn Arias from the sexual conduct. It says, Al Kinyazov Ish. That's a famous postdoc. Al Ken Yazov Ishes Ovi Ves Imoi. A man should live, but Ish here is male. A man should leave behind his father and his mother. The Dovet Be Ishto, he should cling to his wife. The Oyu Lebosor Echod, and they become one flesh. When do they become one flesh? When they have a baby born. When they have a baby born. Yeah, they have relations, then they have a baby. So the man leaves his, his father and mother, which later on the Torah learns from there. Dovah, he should not have relations with his mother, he should not have relations with another male. He gives you the right conduct of a person, leave your family behind, meaning don't have incest relationship, and stick to your wife and not to your male partner, yeah, etc. And that is basically what the Pesach is saying. But that Pesach is talking about a man, right? Stick to your wife and not your friend's wife. That's saying, al of Ish, Ish Bala Right? So I would say a female doesn't have to leave her family. Maybe a female is allowed to have relations with a foreign man after she got married and she's not Jewish. Maybe she can still play the field. Yeah? Because it says Yazov Ish. It doesn't say Odom, which is even more general. It says Ish. Amalei. So he answered, no, 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 don't worry. They don't get off the hook, the Goites. No. Hachi Amar Vyuda. Vehoyu lebosor echod. Since you have to read till the end of the Pasuk, it says they, who's they? They is him and her should become one flesh. Hadar alvinu ko. What's alvinu? The alev noav. The pasuk mix them together again, the merge them again. Although it says that the man leaves his family, nevertheless, since it says vehoyu lebostal echod, they plural him and her dovak be ishtoi cling to his wife. They should become one flesh. That is to say, they should become one. They should have relations together, but neither him nor her should have relations outside the marriage. Yeah, adulterous ones. And therefore, the woman too is not off the book. Don Rabbanu. Okay, we're continuing more on the issue of uh, adultery by Goim. What does, again, the standards of Goim and for Jews, we're going to see very soon, when it comes to relationship is different. Just as a side point before I talk about your question, Moshe, by Goim, it's much easier halachically to get married than to get divorced. The Raman says to get married for a Goy, he doesn't need chupa, ksuba, kiddush, and the whole story. They basically make some kind of mutual agreement. It's just more egalitarian, yeah? It's more like today. Now do it's a Goy, says the Raman, they both want to get married. They don't have to get married, it's true, but if he did, then she's an association that yeah, that, that prohibits them from having adulterous relationship. To get divorced is much, much easier than the Jews. To get divorced, they say, okay, that's it, it's all over between us. 
Indian. You don't, uh, you know, you don't cook as well as you used to. Ten years ago, finished. Um, done with your, with your uh, dirty socks. That's it, Tim McKenzie. They get divorced, but just saying we don't want each other. They decide they don't want each other. They make some kind of agreement. That's it. Much much easier because there's less kedusha. When there's less kedusha, there's also less uh, problem. You know. No the pain, Indian, no gain. Indians have it even easier. You know, Indians get divorced. Ah, uh, she erases the thing. The Indians get divorced by what? Yeah. I see, he's joking. <laughs> We're having a serious sheer here on the internet, and, and he's making fun. But the Arabs, it's also easy. But the Arabs, he tells her, go, 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 three times and finish. Yeah. Yeah, the Arab, the male, the, male, the man tells his wife. <laughs> go, go, go. He says, go, go three times, and she goes. Go, go. Ton Rabonon, yeah. But let's continue now. Ton Rabonon. Ish, yeah. So, it says in the Torah, the Ish, Ish, El Kosh, El Besoroi, Lotsikrivu, Legalos, Erva. When the Torah talks in Parshas Kedoshim, the Torah gives you like an introductory postuk and tells you Ish, Ish. Again, remember from yesterday, we repeat the word Ish twice. And it says, don't get near your Sher Bosor, don't, don't get near the wrong kind of woman, your mother, doesn't mean not get near, obviously, means not having relations, and according to some, not touching, by the way, not touching in the form of, if people ever ask you, what's the sort of the guy once asked me, he told me, he doesn't say anywhere in the Torah whatsoever that men and women shouldn't dance together holding hands. So I opened the and says, it does say, we're actually being lenient. It says, don't get close. To, to a woman who's Nida, and she is, this not married girl, uh, Nida, Aishas Ish, whoever, he said, don't get near. If I get near her, on the bus, I'm being Mako, you know? Because the real shot is, Lotikor means don't touch her in an affectionate way. Some people said it's Doraisa. Yeah, some of the kisses, it's not a Chi of Chorus, as we said, it's not a Chi of Chorus unless a real, real penetration. But if the kiss and a hug, yeah, there is, according to some, that's a Chisar Doraisa. She doesn't carry a chorus, and he said, Doraisa, yes. So there's definitely Easter if you dance and you touch her and you like her, etc. And she's Anita and she's uh, or somebody else's wife. That, according to many opinions, is Sudor Raisa. So this guy, you know, with all the respect, I'm saying, like, you know, people should think before they talk. Sorry. Ellen has a question. Yes. Oh, in theory, okay. In theory, if she's not, in theory, now that she's not married, but she's not Nida. Uh, then uh, there are other issues over your hurim. It's true. Then, 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 no, you're right. It doesn't fall under that. There'll be other issues because uh, you're not going to ever. Whatever. That's a different section, but you have a point. You have a point. She yeah. didn't need until she goes to the mikvah. No, no, let's say she did. No, let's say she's a non married woman. It's a point. Ellen is making a true point. Let's say she's a non married woman, but she went to the mikvah, which she shouldn't, but she did. So then there's no answer to the right. So if you touch her, however, there could be other issues there, or better for the whole framework and tradition. But I would say, with respect, even somebody in his family is not his wife or, or, or children. I think it says that uh, the Shulchan Aruch, because the Shulchan, Shulchan Aruch being done, this is a disgusting practice to like, you know, I mean, to touch kiss one sister. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, right, to kiss one sister also is not, is not proper. Right. Okay. Ton Rabbanon, Ish. Yeah, we are in Nun Zainam with base. Anybody here for the GPS? We are towards the end. We're about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 lines from the heat, from the narrow lines. We're still in the narrow lines. Tonu Rabonum. The line starts with the word Hadal. Okay? The line starts with Hadal. It's about uh, more than 10 lines from the bottom of the narrow lines. Tonu Rabonum. Ish. Matanu Rabonum. Ish. Ish. Why did the Torah find it necessary to repeat the word Ish twice? It says a man should not get near, meaning should not have relations or anything like, with the forbidden women. So why did the Torah repeat the word Ish twice? We already discussed that. And we said, That is coming to tell me that Kutim also, and here Kutim doesn't mean those dubious people coming from Kuta, really Kutim means any guy, any person in the world, any guy is Muzhar al is warned not to be in the wrong kind of sexual contact with the wrong people, just like a Jew. Already a question by Baruch, yes. Is this a cloud? God all here, Ish Ish? Meaning? Is Meaning it a that, that, yes. that's rubbles, it's inclusive of, of the Goran, especially when it talks about, about the dealing of, of, of the Fashos. Let's take one thing at a time. The Fashos and Arayos. Yesterday we saw the word Ish Ish includes going for Arayos, also for other things, right? For Bir Hashem, and then also for Vedazoro, yes. It includes it for other things as well, true. But now we're talking about Arayos. So, Frank Mara. Is this the source? Meocha from here, we're learning it. 
nafka. Are we taking it out from here? Is this the source? Mehosam nafka. Yeah, we're learning from a different source from over there. It says lemol. Lemol is a quote from the one pasuk. Remember, there's one pasuk when Hashem spoke to Adam, telling him about the tree of uh, the etz adas, the tree of knowledge. And there, the word lemol. Each and every word is teaching me a different halacha. The word lemol taught me zegilo yarais, which means. Why are you telling me the words ish ish are the words to include the guy to prohibit him from Arias? We have another source from Odom Arishon where there it says Lemo to include Gil Arias. What's the source? Is it from Odom Arishon which says Lemo or is it from Pashas Kedoshim when he talks about the Jews and including the guy ish ish? Where's your source? Answers the Gemara the guy really has two different tracks when it comes to Arias. Hosom be Arias did who? When Hashem spoke to Adam, which was the forefather of all of humanity, then it speaks about Arias of the Goyim. It's telling to Mackenzie not to have relations with his next door neighbor, Mrs. McKinley. That is Barayas did who? The Hocha, over here, Barayas did Dan. Over here, when it says Ish Ish, that's very logical. It, it means that the same, the same level of Arias that we should not be in touch with, so to the guy, which means the guy should not have relations with his neighbor, Mrs. Cohen. Yeah, that is what it's coming to tell me. Superficially speaking, that's what we're saying. Yeah, there's a guy not having relations with his relatives or non married woman, Goisha, and there's Jews. Ektani Seifa, Ba Alarais Israel, Nidoin Bedine Israel. The Seifa says, the, the last part of the Bryce says, if he has relations with an Erva who is Israel, such as a married woman who is Jewish, then he has the Nidoin, he's being judged and tried and executed according to Dine Israel. Which means, interesting, if he has relations with a non Jewish woman, then the laws of Noachai's law, the, the, the Noachai's laws apply to him. If he has relations with a Jewish woman, then he's being executed and tried like what, like a Dina Yisrael, as if he was Jewish himself. He touched a Jewish woman, then, whoops, all of a sudden we judge him, we try him as if he is a Jew. Which is not so simple, because what does it really mean? Lemai Hil what does that mean halachically? Practically, what are you really saying over here? Amar of Nachman, Amar Abba Baravua, Lo Nitzlecha, you know what it's coming to tell me? Only for one thing. Ela le'eda ve'edim ve'asro. Very interesting. Eda, edim ve'asro. Eda means what? That we need a Jew tried by 23 judges, and the Goy by one. Edim, a Jew needs two Edim to testify against him, and the Goy one. A Jew needs a Sra, and a Goy doesn't. Wow, so something very strange is happening over here. Because what comes out now? If the guy had relations with Mrs. McKinley, then what? Then he's tried like a guy, which is really a stringent sheet motion. Stringent, stringent. Which means what? It's a humra. We're strict on him. And we say, ah, you had relations with Mrs. McKinley, your neighbor? One aide saw you without warning. An aide was watching from the window. Yeah, with no warning. One aide, no straw, with one judge. Boom. Done with you. And if he has relations with Mrs. Cohen, then we say, hey, hold on. if Tim McKenzie married Belinda, so then what? So then they're a married couple, and if Mrs. McKenzie is playing the field outside the marriage with a guy, then he and she get killed, the adulterer. But if Mrs. McKenzie has relations with Chaim Yankel, then Chaim Yankel's punishment is not more severe whether she's married or not. Got me? In other words, the, Jew, the non Jewish woman's status. Yeah, as married woman doesn't affect the Jews. Also, anyways, it's also anyways whether she's married or not. Yeah, and Kanoi Pagin boy, but it's not more severe. Iker Adin. I've heard something maybe. Whatever. Iker Adin. I'm talking now with a very cold glitch which here. So Iker Adin, if the woman is married or not, not Jewish woman, vis a vis the Jewish man, does make a difference. It's as bad, not as good. Yeah. Okay. That's so. I'm answering your question because it's. Not to get here, but it's uh, it's true. You get the other way around the circle. Ah, that's we're in the middle of the story. We're in the middle of the of the forest here. We didn't get out yet. The Gemara right away changes because that makes sense. Does make sense that to 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 make the Jewish woman cheaper than the non-Jewish one? Ella Omar Biyochanan. What's Ella? We switch everything, you know, like in a card game. Whoops, everything changes. We swipe it clean. Now we come with a new idea. Omar Biyochanan. Lo mitzlecha Ella lenaira hameoyroso. 
Which means, again, what did we say? We have a formula, we're trying to fill it in. What's the formula? The formula is, we say that if a Goy had relations with somebody non-Jewish, he's judged like a, like a non-Jew, and if he were Jewish, then, judged, then he's judged as if he was a Jew himself. What does it mean? Can't be a married woman, because that would be bizarre and absurd. So we're looking for a new solution, which Rabbi Yochum is giving us. It's Naira Amarosa. What's Naira Amarosa? Naira Amarosa is a young girl who is Marosa, which means she's, again, I don't like to use the word engaged, because it's not two days engagement. You know, Marosa means she's married, but didn't yet have relations. Yeah? Didn't even have a chupa. She, is not, she does not yet live with her husband. She lives with her parents, but she's already, maybe in English, she's betrothed. Yeah, to her husband. Naira Marosa. The Ledidu lays Lehu. By the God, there's no concept of Naira Marosa. If a Jewish girl, sort of, it's sorry, no. If a non Jewish girl gets Meorosa, whatever that means, um, again, very loose translation of engaged, she's like married, he didn't yet consummate the marriage to the non Jewish boy, then they don't have such a concept. If she then has relations with another man before she actually started living with her husband, then there's no, I wouldn't say it's the nicest thing in the world, you know, I don't think she's good marriage material, but there is no prohibition really. So by them, there's no Nama Rosa. And therefore, if he has relations with Miss McKinley, the Nama Rosa, nothing happens. But if he has relations with the Nama Rosa who's Jewish, then, uh, then we try him like a Jew. That makes sense, right? Because that's more humor for us. We, that, that is better. Get it? Nama Rosa is not Jewish, nothing doing. Nara Marosu is Jewish, yeah, it's Miss Cohen, who's betrothed Meuras to Mr. Cohen, to Chosen Cohen, she's Meuras, in two weeks time she's going to be Mabish under the Chupa, and McKinley had relations with her, then, then what do we do? Oh, then it's Chumrah, because we have Nara Marosu, one second, the Dainina Lehu Badina Didan. Then we judge him in our dinim, under our dinim, and we say, you guys don't have Nara Marasa, sorry, but we do. And if you touch, not touch, if you really touch, if he had relations with the Nara Marasa who is Jewish, then he is tried, not tried and tested, but tried and executed. But that makes sense? So we have two tracks? Okay, so excuse me before you ask your, you know, yeah, let, no, so you, let, let no, question time. Mr. Cohen it also ma 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 automatically makes it possible for Mr. Cohen anyway. Also true, also true, yes, that's, yeah, in other words, if that's, besides the point, Moshe is making a, a true point, that a woman who had relations with a guy cannot marry a coin later on, true, or a babzer, or etc. Yes, Mark has a question. Yeah. On paper, it's more machmer. But in practice, it doesn't really help much that you have to have Aiden and Hasra and everything else because... But it's still more machmir than with the Goyim. But the Goyim Bechlad doesn't die. But if... I mean, to, 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 to really make it fair, so to speak, we, we would we, we, we'd have one judge and one, one eight. Not, and now you're now you're you're, uh -huh. you're not making it, you're not making uh, Jewish blood cheap, so to speak. Ah, uh, th thank you, Rashi. Thank you, Baruch. Says Rashi, ain't sorry. Rashi Bermasid de la Didu It's above, way above uh, where we are now. It's in the middle of the page. Says Rashi, what I said was right. He is nido in Beskila. The guy, if Mackenzie had relation with the Jewish. Nar Maroso, we try him, right? As opposed to if he had relations with the non Jewish Nar Maroso. But Rashi finishes off, because of Borg's point, I will end Sorich Eid of Eidim Vasro. The Lagor Marais did do, very good. If he has relations with a, with a Jewish girl who's an Nar Maroso, then we try him like a goy. Treat him like a goy, and one eight is enough. No straw, no warning, and one judge. Enochinami. Very good, thank you, thank you. And that is Enochinami, what Rashi uh, makes it for you. <coughs> the Gemara now extrapolates from that. Aval, Eishis Ish. I, I still have to answer your question, but let's just do a few more lines. Aval, Eishis Ish, Badina Didru, Dainina Lehu. In other words, what are you telling me? Naira Maroso is what is try you, you treat him if he had relations with Jewish Naira Maroso. Like their dinim. In other words, he's tried, but in a harsher way. Are you coming to tell me that Aishis Ish is the same thing as their dinim? In other words, do you want to tell me that if you had relations with a fully married woman, Aishis Ish, she's already been married under the chupa for 10 years, five children, probably married woman, and Tim McKenzie had relations with her and she's Jewish. Do you want to tell me that then we try what? Like Dina Didru, like their 
like their dinim, you know? Is that so? The Tanya, it says in the Braisa, it says that if a goy is coming, we're not talking now about the aid of the now we're talking about the way that he gets killed, the form of execution. The goy had relations with Nara Marosa, he gets skila. Interesting. Although usually his death is by sword or by chedek, according to our opinion, but if he has relations with Nara Marosa, the din is baskila because there is all grosh in the Torah about it. Aleishes ish nidon bechedek, and if he has relations with an aleishes ish, just like a regular yid has relations with an aleishes ish, a fully married woman, the punishment for both sides is chedek. Forget about baskoya now, a regular woman chedek. So too, the guy also gets chenek. So you see what? The Ibe didn't do, de Saifu. Yeah, if you tell me that Eishat Ish gets the judgment like then, he should get Saif. Maybe, maybe he gets the, the quicker way, okay. But give him Saif, because he should be judged like a guy. Not like he, there was only something unique for Narmar also. There a third status. What happens if she was Nichnes Alachupa Velo Nivala? Up until now, we spoke about Nara Marosa, he gets Skila. Look at you. Marosa means what? She lives with daddy and mommy, like love the other Hasidish girls, they have a whole year between engagement and marriage. They hardly see the Chosan. She's completely with her family, but she's already. Okay, today she's not even Eshatish, but let's say she was Makudash to her husband. That's Marosa. Eshatish means what? She is fully married, she already had relations, she consummated the marriage. What about an in-between stage? What about if there was chupa? There was chupa already, mazel tov, chupa, they even broke the glass. <laughs> so today, today the kiddushin and the chupa are together, but there's no bia yet. The wedding can take six, seven, eight hours, and then at night, much later, is the bia. So what happens if during that period of time where she had chupa already, but she was not yet Niv Allah. She didn't have that yet relations with her husband. What happened at that stage? The Ladidu Leis Lahu, they don't have such a concept. They don't have such a concept. Which means, if Tim McKenzie, a Goyish wedding, can get a little bit wild, I was told, there was never been to one yet. Let's say the non Jewish wedding is so crazy, and one of the guys has relations with a Kala. So there's no chupa by them, like some kind of ceremony similar to chupa, let's say by us. But they didn't consummate the marriage yet, and she already had relations then with somebody else. Yeah? The stomach can happen today. So then what? So by them there's no there's no answer. By them, as long as he didn't consummate the marriage, there is no you mentioned the story from the Torah, the Torah the, the Gemara will mention later that it says the Ulas Baal. Remember when it says about um, by Avimelech, Avimelech, Hashem is rebuking Avimelech in the dream, and it says, why did you have relations in Chamesh Elisha? The Be'ulas Baal. You're not Jew, but still you shouldn't touch a woman who's Be'ulas Baal. What's Be'ulas Baal? They had relations with the husband. That is to tell me that a married woman who didn't yet, a guy should be married woman, who didn't have relations yet, for the other guy, it's not also to be with her. Again, it's Mechor, it's not nice, it's not proper. But maybe it's also lechatchila, but then don't chiyuv misa, and that is the point. Danina lehu bedina didan, which means if the guy, however, had relation with a Jewish woman who was under the chupa, and he's called Nesua, she's already fully married, but didn't have relations yet, then he gets killed like us, and he gets chenek. Yeah, that is what it's coming to tell me. The Tanya of Chanina beulas bal yeshlehem. The Goyim have the concept of Be'ulas Baal, Nichnas al Chupa v'lo Nivala, Ein Lohen. But the concept of being under the Chupa and what? Lo Nivala, by them, no, by them, nothing happened.